Tommy, I cynically believe that I can be optimistic in any situation. Yeah, I think you have to try really hard, but I like your cynically belief in it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I try to be cool and calm in the face of adversity. I mean, yeah. late, lately, I think I've been a bit of a mess, but uh, I think for the most part, I can think clearly. Today was not one of those days, and I'll tell you why. Today, I'm outside shoveling the driveway, you see. Yes. Uh, uh, my there, favorite thing in the world. Oh, my God. There was all this snow, and where I'm at, I didn't get as much snow as you did, but still, it was enough. So I'm out here shoveling, and the girlfriend comes out and said, just randomly, this isn't something you expect to hear, the little one just got nail polish in her eye. <laughs> That's great. And I'm like, what? Doesn't she know what fingernails are? <laughs> I mean, doused her eyes with nail polish remover. Oh, my God. So what happened? She had opened up a bottle of green nail polish. And when she took the cap off, the brush at the end of the cap flipped, flicked specks of green nail polish right into her general eye vicinity. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I could see how that would be a, a problem there. Oh, the hazards of trying to be beautiful, huh? Ladies? <laughs> oh. So instinctively, I automatically assumed that this was my fault somehow, you know, because <laughs> of course it was. So before the worst breakup line that I had ever heard in real life was this. This this girl I know was in college, and um, the, office, the office was all the rage at the time. Like the, uh-huh. the first time it was all the rage. I know it's still all the rage because kids say all the rage, right? Are you familiar like- with The Office? Am I? No. Okay. Well, basically, the big romance of the show was Jim and Pam. Pam was a receptionist. Jim was a salesman. He always looked at the camera and made little faces. That was John Krasinski. Um, Okay. And so he had a crush on Pam, and it was the big will they or won't they of the show. It's this big, great, big romance. I mean, if you've seen the show, you know. Um, But anyway, this guy she was dating looked her right in the eye one night and basically broke up with her by saying, you're just not my Pam. <laughs> That's awesome. Which is awfully dorky and ridiculous. Um, I think it's pretty pretty swell, and I don't even uh, watch The Office. You think it's pretty what? Swell. Swell? You think it's swell? Yeah. I don't think I've ever used that word before in my life. I feel very weird and confused now. Well, I'm not, I'm not cross with you for using swell. That's for sure. <laughs> We got uh, Poppycock and Balderdash coming up. That's a bunch of tomfoolery. (laughs) Malarkey. But anyways, I was expecting my own breakup line that I was about to receive to beat that. Like, you pour nail polish in my daughter's eye. We are done. (laughs) I could see you throwing the shovel and running I, I don't know why, yeah. but that's just that's going through my head right now. It was what? Yeah, I, I definitely had a. You know, I did a double take. If I was drinking a beverage, I would have done a spit take. I mean, yeah. my I, my legs were flying around like I was a Scooby Doo character. It was, oh yeah, it was wild. I sure, I sure you run not weather rather well. What is that supposed it's really to be? It's hard to say not rather well for me. I don't know why. Well, that's a lot of words strung together for you. <laughs> it's a deep thought. Yeah. I mean, this wasn't my fault at all, but I wasn't even in the house, but I feel like it already reflects badly on me. I've been here two days, and poison control already has to be called. That's not oh, a good no. sign, you know? You really? You guys did? What? You had to call poison control for real? That's That's what we did, so... I mean, this, uh, she's, the girlfriend's like, oh, I'm going to call poison control. And I could see the faces of her family and friends just standing in a row, arms folded, and all of them shaking their heads in unison. Like, we knew this would happen. <laughs> we tried to tell you he's useless. So you're like, quick, what, what? Google, tell me what to do. Yeah. I mean, I just naturally assume these days that most people don't like me because that's the default status of society, just blind hatred until proven otherwise. Sure. Okay. So I just picture all the family and friends being like, well, why weren't you watching them? You just let those kids pour anything they want into their eyes. They need supervision. You You were being the man of the house by shoveling the driveway. Thank you very much. That's what I think, too. And this was right after, however, I I was sitting there watching wrestling, and the middle one sits down next to me and says, are they fighting? 
And then since <laughs> since she's pretty advanced for her age, she got it. She's like, oh, they're not actually trying to hurt each other. They're pretending. And I was like, I still believe it's real. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, kid, there's grown adults that will fight you <laughs> if you say that out loud. Well, and here's the thing. She sat there and she got really caught up in it. And I thought, oh, my God, I just ruined another life. <laughs> right. And then... <laughs> She started talking about how she was going to be women's champion, champion, and when she turns 18, she's going to be a wrestler, and she's seven years old, and I'm like, oh, my God, this kid. What have I done? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I shoveled today, too. I love it. I love shoveling. I don't think there's – I don't know if there's anything – it's, like, better than mowing the grass. I don't know what it is about shoveling, but I absolutely love it, and I – probably do it every day maybe maybe it's because i only do it like twice a year that i love it so much but i spent two hours today and boy am i tired but it was a lot of fun yeah i think it took me about two hours something like that i mean uh when i was a gawky teen i hated all the yard work but man once you hit 30 and and you get those dad <laughs> shoes and that first car heart yeah dude i swear there should be there should be a tiktok just like dad's jumping out of bed to go shovel <laughs> yes <laughs> it's just like the, the boots he just jumps out of bed and lands right into the snowmobile suit <laughs> just the night before it's somebody's excited face staring out the window <laughs> run, right. running out his, running out there with a ruler oh that's funny like on his knees backwards looking out the window from his bed <laughs> yep <laughs> oh that's funny gets up, do that. gets up at 5 a.m honey it's go time Right. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, no, I got up uh I got up at six and uh the beloved was like, eh, don't worry about it. I'll have a um the lady that she rides into work with lives down the street. So she's like, I'll just have her pick me up in the road, which you know, okay, cool, whatever. So I got out there about ten o'clock and I lasted to about eleven thirty and then uh, I had to go run some errands and I came back and I did about uh, a little over a half hour more, so yeah, mm -hmm. it was fun. The plow guy got me in between though, so the the half hour at the end was a lot worse because half of it was like hard and and salted and yeah, not, not nearly as good. I listened to uh, WTF. You ever heard of WTF? Uh, what the fuck is that? Yeah, yeah, with Mark Marin. I listened to the Mike Campbell episode. It was really good. If anybody's a big Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers fan. The only thing I didn't like about it, not to shit on Mark Marin because I think he's really good at interviewing and I I, I think I'd like him, but man, he was fanboying out. <laughs> yeah, he tends to do that. I mean Is it, it's like he, it, I picture him there with like his his fists clenched on his chin with like stars <laughs> in his eyes. Yeah, kind of like every time I talk to you, that's my natural pose. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. I get it. Not to shit on Mark Marin, but any any publicity is good publicity. Did you hear me, Mark? Yeah, come on, Mark. When are we gonna be on? Yeah. <laughs> I, I always, why isn't there? Why isn't there like a famous comedian that interviews comedians that aren't famous? Wouldn't that be a great? That'd be like a great interview. Yeah, that would be because fun. There, if you there got was so much, if you got different a, dynamics. Yeah, if you got a guy like Kevin Hart. And he, yeah. he just started randomly picking out open micers and stuff. That would be sweet. Oh, it'd, be great. it'd be awesome. I need to I need to talk to somebody's publicist. Yeah. Hit up Kevin Hart. I'm sure you can make something happen. Yeah, he seems like a nice guy. He might be interested in that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I haven't listened to Mark Marin in several years. It used to be one of my go tos and now I just haven't. I should really go back and see what I've missed. So anyways, the Mark. little is crying. <laughs> Yeah, we gotta story. figure out what happened to old Green Eyes. Yeah, so Little is crying and scared, and the girlfriend is trying to comfort her because she's a great mom. And I noticed that when she came outside and got me, I pulled pulled out my Bluetooth earbud, and I lost <laughs> that little rubber nub that fits into your ear. So oh. I said, in the midst of all this, I lost the rubber thing on my earbud because I had suffered ah. a traumatic event too and needed comforting. <laughs> oh, that's where you did it. I mean, that I wish I was making that up, but I, I, it's an actual thing I said and something I was actually worried about. As as the littlest, most adorable kid in the universe lost an eye. <laughs> He's worried about his earbud. I'm like, well, how's this earbud ever going to fit in this ear again comfortably? I don't know. 
<laughs> You're like, I'm going to go look for the earbud while you guys uh, figure out yeah. if we need to pluck your eyes out or not. Yeah. So the girlfriend calls poison control, which, by the way, who knew this was still a thing? I mean. Yeah, right? I mean, is it poison control? Just Google? Apparently, there's still a number you can call. I think <laughs> I, I think, mo- I think moms is instinctively know the number. Like, as soon as that <laughs> child pops out, it pops in their head, that number for poison control. Dads are over there asking Jeeves and shit. Yeah, right. Put ice on it. You'll be okay. <laughs> ah, then you always want a green eye. It's crazy, though. <laughs> It's an organization that exists that tells you if you should go to the hospital or not. <laughs> and they're not even there. They're not even there. Like, what are your <laughs> qualifications to tell me where whether or not I'm going to die? Like, I wonder if it's like an answering service, like press one for English. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like, I just need to know. I think I eated some taint, I eated some tainted ham. What should I do? <laughs> Oh, God. I mean, I I think it's fairly obvious in most cases, if you swallow kerosene, you should go to a hospital. I mean, I don't know what kind of qualifications these people need to have, but I think most of them should be obvious. Did I ever tell you my swallowing kerosene story? (laughs) No, but I'm excited to hear it. Oh, you're gonna love it. We'll get uh, to green on here. Yeah, in a yeah, yeah. We'll get to green. Yeah. We'll get this is my this is my missing Bluetooth part of the <laughs> part of the story here. Um so uh 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 Abe Falcon and yeah. uh and uh Hab that we know, uh yeah. Harry F. Beast there, um part of the couch party, which this uh, miserable retail slave probably wouldn't have been a thing without couch party, I think, maybe. I don't know, but it was uh kind of intertwined back in the day. But anyway, uh Abe and I uh, have used to live together in uh, in a really nice condo out in Clio, and we were partying one night. And there's uh, uh, I see this bottle of El Toro on top of the uh, freezer, fridge freezer, you know. Right. Oh, and I think I say, I've heard hey, this story before. <laughs> I think you have. Yeah. And I, that's like, I don't know if I ever told it on the pod though. So I say, "Hey, what's that?" And Hab goes, oh, that's that's some El Toro. Do you want some? And I said, sure. And he hands me a bottle, and it looks like it's from, like, 1967. I'm like, all right, whatever. You know, there's dust, literally dust on it, and half the fucking label's missing and shit. (laughs) So I just start chugging out of it because I'm fucking 21 and already pretty drunk. (laughs) Only a drunk 21-year-old would take a bottle that looked like it was from 19 Dickity Do that's got cobwebs and dust and shit on it. (laughs) Just wrap it around my lips. Yep. <laughs> and I'm a germaphobe too. That's how much. Uh, that's how much, I, I, I was born into alcoholism. I guess <laughs> <laughs> my parents don't even drink, so I guess that's. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. I guess it was just a came out of the. <laughs> I was ready to drink ever since I was a toddler. I guess, yeah. but uh, <laughs> he came out of the womb <laughs> holding a can of Steel Reserve. <laughs> oh, I found out the other day that steel reserves like eight percent. So I might have to try one of those when I get off this dry February bullshit. But uh anyway, uh so I start down in the El Toro and I'm like loving it. I'm like, okay, tequila's pretty good. I think it was probably the first time I had tequila. Yeah. And uh and um Hab goes, uh dude, how much did you drink of that? And I was like, I don't know, four or five shots maybe. And he's like, oh, shit, you actually drink it? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, it tastes weird? And I was like, what? It's tequila. And he's like, no, it's not. It's gasoline. And I was like, what? <laughs> and he's like, dude, that's gas. I didn't think you'd actually drink it. And it was funny because he plan- he, 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 he kind of like didn't watch me drink it. And then yeah. he like, it was, it was great, you know? And, and so I was like, dude, it's not gasoline, is it? And he's like, He's like, yeah. And I was like, well, what, what, what do I do? And he's like, oh, I don't know. I fucking never drank gas before. What the fuck? What do you, you think I know what to do? And I'm like, dude, no, no, it's not gas. Why would you have gas in a bottle? And he's like, right. I don't, somebody, he's like, it's gas, man. I'm telling you, it's gas. And uh, it might have said kerosene, either ca- ga- gas or kerosene. But I start freaking out, like on the verge of tears. Like I am, <laughs> I am, I'm, I'm now. I'm standing up. I'm off the couch now. My fists are clenched. I'm like, you know, spits coming out of my mouth. I'm like, why did you let me drink that? And he's like, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's fucking tequila. Calm down. I'm like, all right, all right. So, uh, you know, I like come back down. I'm like, Jesus, why would you do that? And I take another swig and he's like, I'm just kidding. It's, it's kerosene. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck, man? Like, what's going 
<laughs> Still to this day, I don't know. I'm guessing that it was tequila, but that's great. Maybe that's why I'm so fucked up. That's hilarious. <laughs> what a great prank to play. And I think you're one of the few naive souls in this universe to even get that. <laughs> it's so stupid. Like, yeah. who would believe that? I, mean, like, a, I don't think he actually thought I would believe it at first. Probably not. I think, just like, I think he thought I'd just laugh and keep drinking it. Yeah. But I was just like that level of naive and uh, drunk where I was just like, what? <laughs> like, my brain couldn't fully, like, fathom that he might be playing a trick on me for some reason i don't know the beautiful thing about that is i can picture that entire interaction in my head while you were telling it (laughs) and shout out to hab and the original couch party crew what's up that's right yeah a lot of good times with those guys i mean so i believe it or not if you go to the poison control website they actually have blog posts on the website like, I don't know uh-huh. who trolls Poison Control's website for reading material. <laughs> Three out of five stars. Yeah, like, uh, they have titles, these blogs, like, Antifreeze, Bad for Kids and Pets. <laughs> you don't say. It's a, it's a, they're like 11-year-olds cruising for science projects. Yeah, I mean, that that's pretty dumb. Uh, one time I was at an active shooter, shooter training at the Retail Paradise that gainfully employs me. Uh-huh. And uh, it had a bunch of tips and tricks on how to survive an active shooter scenario. And I'll never forget it because at the end of the presentation video, the screen went all black and there was somber piano music playing. And on screen, in this simple white font, was one of the dumbest things I had ever read. It said, you deserve to survive. <laughs> thanks Thank for, God. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for the permission, company. <laughs> God, thanks a lot. Now now I know. You should sue him for PTSD. Yeah, right. I mean, there's nothing funny about PTSD, but I mean, in that situation, in the context we're talking about. I mean, bef- <laughs> be- before I saw that, I was going to hurl myself headfirst into a bullet, but now that I know that I deserve to survive, I'll just go the other way. Thank you. Was it the piano or the just the darkness and the foreboding before it came up? Uh, darkness and foreboding. Yeah, that always makes me feel better. Yeah, I know, right? So she's calling Poison Control to see what we should do, and I'm thinking there's still all that snow out there. My dumb car is covered in, like, all this snow. I need to get out there. Goddamn Bluetooth. Yeah. I, oh, yeah, thanks for reminding me. My goddamn Bluetooth. How am I supposed to listen to my jams, you know? So I, I'm like, I need to get out there and clear the snow out the way so we can get out of the driveway if we have to. You know, I have all these. And at the same time, I have all these thoughts running through my head. I'm like, what if she has a green sparkly eye forever? <laughs> Is that what it looked like? Did it like flood through her eye? Well, no, but that's what I, I mean, it, you, you could see specks of. Point, at that point, you got to give her a choice. Do you want us to call poison control or do you just want to? You want to be a super villain? Yeah, <laughs> you want to be a Batman villain? Maybe a <laughs> maybe a social media influencer with for beauty products? You know? Maybe Pretty sure nail polish has got to be non toxic, right? There's uh, people that chew their nails constantly. Oh, you would think so, but it says that you need to call somebody if you ingest it. However, well, that yeah. that's I a very do that. That's a very good point, though. You do chew your nails. What are you doing there? Huh. Right. I mean, I don't know, but I know people that have, or that be, I know that people do that. Yeah. So, I mean, hmm. she either becomes a Batman villain, a social media influencer, or she just haunts the aisle, the fingernail polish aisles in all the stores like some <laughs> grim green glittery ghost. Don't do right. it. You'll right. put yeah. your eye out. <laughs> yeah. Don't flick the brush. <laughs> And then I remembered, I also thought about this. I remember that one time when my sister was the little's age, the same age, and she got a pack of Reese's Pieces at the gas station because we always got a pack of Reese's Pieces every time we went to the gas station. Well, this good time, trip. That's a good trip. yeah, for real, it made you want to go to the gas station. So right. the, this particular <laughs> we don't see bird again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looks like you're running low on the old petrol, Dad. <laughs> Let's go see Nathan, the the uh, the gas station attendant. Right. Well, this particular time, my sister gets a pack, opens it up, and thinks, "What the hell? 
That would be a good time to see how many Reese's Pieces I can fit up my nose. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, indeed. The answer, dear listener, is two. Two <laughs> Reese's Pieces, one in each nostril, which, if you had seen the size of her tiny nostrils at the time as compared to the size of your common everyday Reese's Pieces, you'd be pretty impressed with this feat. Like, there was a lot of force and effort given to this little project. She, she tried to sniff them? She snored them? She just thought, well, I wonder if I could fit Reese's Pieces up my nose. And she could. And then they were stuck. So after oh, that, no. Reese's Pieces were banned in the house, just in case old sis there decided to inhale another snoop full of peanut butter candies. She ruined the best candy for you. Absolutely. I got the blame for it, too, even though I wasn't home. Because my sister said that I dared her to put them up her nose, and that's how I understood that six years six year olds don't understand sarcasm whatsoever. They don't get it. <laughs> oh, you really did dare? Apparently, I don't know. It seems oh, like I something I would do. Throwing you under the bus, possibly. But <laughs> that's funny. You fell for it all these years. You're like, maybe I did dare. Maybe I did. Who can tell? It seems like a <laughs> nefarious thing a cad such as myself would do. I'm going to start blaming you for everything, and you're going to be like, yeah, I did do that, didn't I? Yeah. Really? <laughs> I guess I did do that. It's Randy's fault. It's Randy's fault. But, okay. But anyways, I was afraid that the nail polish would be banned in the house for all time, too, on the same lines of the Reese's Pieces, and that that would be bad because there's four girls that live here, and uh, me, too, if I ever want to join a glam rock band, what am I going to do with no nail polish in the house? Screw it. Yeah. <laughs> I got a buddy, my buddy Josh. You know Josh. He paints his toes. Well, that's why. I don't know. He just thinks it's funny. I think I don't know. He's just you know he's 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 funny like that. So <laughs> always, I mean, in the summer he's always wearing flip flops. You know, he says like pink to- pink toenail polish on it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you ask him, he'll just laugh. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm- <laughs> I'm not one to piss on anybody's fucking joy, so whatever he wants to do to make him smile, hey, go for it, bud. Don't bother me. I think it's kind of funny. It's kind of yeah. It's kind of cool. You ever stick way. something where it didn't belong, Tommy? Huh? No. No. Yeah. No. I mean, my finger and my nose. But, oh. I mean. How often a know. day? Oh, my God. Oh, it's a problem. That's the only way to get rid of boogers, though, right? Yeah, and I like breathe through my mouth, so my <laughs> you know I'm a mouth breather. Yeah, so my nose gets really clogged really fast. <laughs> you just inhale all the all the dust and debris and dead skin cells right through your. I said cells weird. I said cells. Yeah, dead skin like cells. Like everything goes everything goes through my mouth, so like nothing goes through my nose, and it just gets all clogged up. You're like Nintendo's Kirby. You ever, see, <laughs> you ever see Kirby, that big white puff ball that eats all the guys? Okay, whatever. Yes. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's that's about my yeah, I don't I don't uh I don't do too many bad things, so I think that's <laughs> or yeah, I don't know. What about you? You got any bad habits that could lead to things going into places? I got bad habits, yeah, for sure. Like drinking that Bud Light. I know. The devil's breath. <laughs> hey, that'd be a good name for uh, a whiskey, huh? The Devil's Breath. Yeah, I drink that whiskey. You drink it up. Mm-hmm. Even if you told me it was kerosene. Yeah, it wouldn't matter. Okay, so what happened? What's the big finale? I'm well, on the edge of the over here. I, I'm I'm out there just a human bulldozer, just getting rid of all this snow in a, a frenzy, you know. What? Yeah, you got to get the car cleared out so you can take her to the hospital, right? Yeah, and uh, but I'm like one of those human bulldozers, like one of those bulldozers that's on the verge of being taken out of commission. You know, it still <laughs> kind of runs, but you're not sure if you trust it for real heavy work or long durations. It's out of warranty. Yeah, always needs an oil change. That's me. <laughs> I hear you. I mean, that's my physical state of fitness these days. Like, I function sometimes. That's about right. it. <laughs> So I'm clearing out all the snow and shit, and I run to the house, and my pants are wet with all the snow clinging to me and whatever, and I'm expecting great green glittery tears to be coming out of her eyes, but the crisis was averted. Good old poison control instructed her on what to do. Um, So we flushed it out and had a little ice pack on it, and her eye wasn't even red, let alone green. 
Oh, wow. Did she take it like a champ or was she pretty uh, freaked out? She was freaked out. She was. Yeah, she, I think I would be too. At seven. Yeah. Uh, well, this is the 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 six year old. Oh, so, OK. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, she took a nap and was fine. And then a few year, hours later, Pookie, my girlfriend, whom I adore, had a chiropractor appointment because she's got one of those bum backs. It was like, do you want me to take the kids to my mom's? And I'm like, look, I've known these kids for 16 months. I got this, you know, no problem. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> so, so she leaves and I asked a little, how was your eye? And she said, good. And then she said, do you like to eat? I'm hungry every minute. Even after I eat, I'm still hungry. And I'm like, <laughs> she'll be just you, fine. Kid. Yeah, exactly. You and her kindred souls. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. I'm that's like, good. Yeah, I'm like, ah, she'll be just fine. And that's when I hear the oldest in the room next door coughing nonstop when she was like, she was choking. And I'm like, God <laughs> damn it! What's the number of that poison control? You know? <laughs> uh, Give me uh, the beat, D boy, and save my soul. Put it in, put it in, put it in. Summer shandy on Thursday. We so motherfucking out here though. We never been this out here. Woo! <laughs> They're gonna walk all over you Pressure pushing down on me Pushing down on you Shit, let's raise the roof Woo. About time, it's the era of the rebels Cloud nine in the era of the vessels Generation fearless Got a taste for weirdness Flow on fire, that's the way my beard is Hard times, jump start the grind It's all good, y'all Things fall apart sometimes Let it go, let me know when you're ready, though Don't push me, cuz To the edge, I'm close When the time comes Ride for something Or live to be nine And then just die for nothing Speak their heart Your baby speak their mind And I'ma play their part And I'ma freak that rhyme One time for you Rhyme one time for you I'm an island, man There ain't nothing else by me, man And I drink enough whiskey To float a battleship around this bitch Any motherfucking how Wow Welcome to the Miserable Retail Slave Show. I'm coming to you from the pod check outside beautiful Bay City, Michigan, USA. My name is Randy. With me is my illustrious co-host, my esteemed colleague, my best sidekick. His name is Tommy. How's it going today, man? It's good. Today was a great day. A so, great um, day. Holy yes, shit. I, How many great days have you ever had in your life? Three. Oh, and this is one of them. Boys and girls, we are in for a treat because Tommy's having a great day and you're all part of it. Holy cow. I was busy all day. I've been busy in a long time, so I was very excited to be busy. And uh, I've been up since like 6 a.m. And I've been, you know, not sitting. This is like the first time I sat down other than to eat dinner. So I'm pretty, uh, pretty pumped. I've had a fulfilled day. What? Fulfilled day. That's a weird thing to say to me (laughs) my day was filled with chores and i don't know i loved it i loved it well i hope you have more loving great days in your future because you deserve them if anybody had deserves anything thanks randy that was uh no that wasn't even sarcastic no it wasn't i i mean it you've walked around your entire life with that ghoulish face that's a real cross to bear (laughs) so i wish you nothing but any happiness you can possibly find thank you sir you're welcome that's what friends are for. This is the Miserable Retail Slave Show. We are a big, dumb comedy podcast. Um, I don't know why I'm even introing us at this point, you know, because that was the longest cold open we've ever had, probably, and we're like a half hour in, so you're like, oh, yeah, my God, what's going on? Yeah, it took us a long time to get through town there, but, you know, passed a lot of good stores on the way. I mean, that's what happens when you're old, Tommy. you got to look around and 
see all the sights and really live for the in. moment. That's what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's the key to happiness. I say is be in the moment. Who says that? A lot of people. Name that's two. Like, that's that's a, well. I mean, I don't know, like the Dalai Lama and shit. You the know, the like Dalai that, Lama. That's why people meditate to you know try to stay in the moment. You're supposed to release all your worries and your anxiety. You're supposed to live for the present. Listen, live in the present. let me tell you about this Dalai Lama of yours. I don't trust anyone that can't even check their own email without assistance. Okay, <laughs> I doubt he can do it. I doubt he has the necessary skills. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, mean, I don't think he talks, does he? I don't know. Do they talk? I don't even know. That's how much I know about them. Llamas do not talk, Tommy, unless you're on mushrooms or something. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know, man. I don't know. Had a good day and uh, looking forward to I don't know if I'm going to be busy or not tomorrow. I guess it depends on if the uh, kids have school because there was no school today. And uh, up here in the frozen, frozen tundra of right outside beautiful Flint, Michigan that I am at, uh, we got about uh, eight or nine inches of snow on top of what was probably almost a six or seven before that. So a lot, a lot of snow, a lot of snow today. Shoveled, loved it. Shoveled for two hours, had a blast. I ran around. I want the sun in the summer. So I don't like the summer. I don't, I, I, I can handle it a little bit, but I'm more of a winter fall guy. Yeah, I know. It's because you're a dismal, oh my God, let me talk <laughs> about my feelings and cry about it type of dude. No, I'm just a, no. I'm just a party animal. I love to surf. I love to <laughs> hang glide, you know. No, I mean, there's benefits of the summer, but if it gets over 75, ugh, I'm going inside and turning the AC on full oh, blast. The summer has those bennies for show. <laughs> Like, <laughs> I mean, you can you can get a, a real righteous tan. You can like do anything you want outside because it's summer. You know, it's too hot. The days are longer. Did you know that? Yeah, but I like the nighttime, man. Thank oh, the Lord for the nighttime. You're a fucking Forget night owl. I am. You know this. You know this. I, the nighttime is the right time. I don't know this because usually you're in bed by nine o'clock. <laughs> I mean, I yeah, when yeah, I'm getting older, but I do uh, I do calm down at night. My mind slows down. I just feel more at ease during the nighttime. I always oh. have since I'm far back as I remember. I just always always like the night. I used to stay up till yeah four or five in the morning just about every night. Same. But I kind of miss it. I know, man. I know it's 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 depressing now. I'm like it's like ten o'clock and I'm like nodding off on the couch. I'm like, God damn it. I remember a few years ago, it was only like, I think it was only like three years ago or something, like on random Saturday nights, we would go out to the bar and then I'd end up at your house and I wouldn't get home till like four or 5 (laughs) a.m. And now just thinking about all of that makes me shudder and cry. (laughs) I think it could happen again. We just got to get, you know, a couple more months, maybe. I don't know. Then it'll be summer again and then we can definitely do it outside. Yeah. I mean, that's the best thing about summer during a pandemic is you can be around people. Yeah, I mean, you could still be outside. You can have like a bonfire or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I this was the longest I, I was outside for. Yeah, shoveling for two hours. That's the longest yeah. I've been outside. And God, probably since the summer. So there we go. Look, and here's the benefit of having a bonfire. Somebody starts coughing around you, you just toss them right in the fire. You just purify the land. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Plus, your bonfire will continue on all night, I'm sure. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I mean, th- this, I know this This whole time you've not been in a good place because you've been used to being busy. You used to be a party dude. You used to be a comedian guy. You used to run around. You used to go to the gym. You used to get haircuts. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I haven't had a haircut since last March. You used to do everything. You've tried a one time. You were a DJ, even like <laughs> yeah. Well, that's actually that's funny because uh, I don't. Did you know that in uh, right out of high school, I was a wedding DJ for a couple years. I feel. Did like, you know that? I me? feel like I did know that, and I feel like I laughed about it because I can't imagine. Any, yeah, I can't imagine anyone trusting you to run their wedding. 
You know, there, there was, there was a disaster one time. I'll tell you the disaster story. It's uh, me and my buddy Chris, who you met before. Um, we were TC Entertainment. You get it, Tom and Chris. Very, uh, very uh, poetic there. Fuck off! Uh, you had your own company. Yeah. Oh yeah. And we advertised in the newspaper, and we just undercut everybody. <laughs> 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 oh shit! You got enemies in the DJ game. Yeah, man. It was like uh, it was like you know, professional DJ, twelve hundred dollars for three hours, and we're like, we'll fucking do five hours for two hundred and fifty bucks. We don't give a shit. You I'm know? surprised. Then, I'm surprised some preppy shit named Roland didn't try coming for your kneecaps. Like you undercutting <laughs> my business. I'm DJ Roll Rolls. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's funny, man. We took uh, my dad was a DJ in the seventies and eighties, and his dad was a DJ in the seventies and eighties. So we just took all that old equipment and we morphed it into one. And oh man, I mean, we didn't have a laptop. I mean, this was like two thousand and one, two thousand and two. Maybe we might have made it to two thousand and three or four. I think we stopped well before we were twenty one, though. But uh, I remember we were at this uh, this wedding. Oh gosh, this should be a story I should really work on because this is funny. I haven't thought about this in years, but we were at this outdoor wedding, and they didn't tell us it was going to be a wedding. They just hired us for the reception, right? So we yeah. get to this hall in the middle of nowhere, and there's like a pond in like the backyard of the hall. Probably a couple, uh, maybe 70 yards from the hall, there's this pond. Okay. And so we're setting up, and, uh, and somebody comes up to us and was like, oh, you guys are the DJs. We're like, yeah. And they're like, okay, well, do you have a speaker that will reach down to that pond? And we're like, no. It's like, it was literally like 70 yards. We're like, no, no. And they're like, well, didn't they tell you? And we're like, what? And they're like, oh, we're going to do the wedding here and we need wedding music. And I was like, what? And they're like, we need <laughs> wedding music. And I was like, oh, I don't have wedding music. I mean, I, I mean, I can throw on some like Harry Met Sally. That's what I, you know, use for my dinner music because it's just like Trump, you know, soft jazz and stuff. So they were like, whatever, that will work. Can you do that? And I was like, oh, well, I can't. You know, so we, we got the speaker out and the speaker was like 20 feet outside the door. You could barely see it from down at the pond. It looked like a little fucking, <laughs> like a little Lego. <laughs> Couldn't hear shit. Yeah. So like, right, that's not gonna work. So uh, somebody was like, "Well, you can use my car. It has a CD player in it." So we drove somebody's car around oh, and Jesus put it right Christ. behind <laughs> where the where the guests were sitting. <laughs> it's like this, they're, <laughs> they're getting married in this little gazebo next to a pond with like this white, you know, cloth on the ground and white chairs with like white bows on the back of them. And here's a fucking 1997 Lumina, like back <laughs> right <up to> it. <laughs> And, uh, and so we talked to the bride and groom before the wedding and the, and the, uh, groom was like, you got, you got my wedding song, right? And I was like, well, yeah, of course I got your wedding song. I know, you know, that's your first dance. And he's like, well, I want to, I want you to play that, uh, when we kiss. And I was like, okay, I can do that. I was like, there, there'll be a little, you know, <clears throat> you know, the music will go down a little bit, but I'll, I'll time it right. Like I, I can, I can figure it out. So, uh, and that went okay. And then. The, the music started to the wedding song, which he told me was I'll Be There For You by Bon Jovi. I don't know if you're familiar with that song. It's a oh, great yeah. song. I know it. And, uh, it's kind of a deep cut, but I mean, it was, you know, it was, I don't think it was probably like a top 20 hit maybe. Yeah, I but, think uh, it, was, it was on the radio and show. Was it? Okay. Yeah. And so, uh, um, so I start the song and they go to kiss and they stop and the groom looks at me and he yells, wrong song. And they were going to take, it was right when the pastor told them to take their first kiss. And so everybody <laughs> looks back at me. I'm sitting in somebody else's car, just shrugging my shoulders. Chris walks away. He fucking walks away because he was standing he ran. next to the car. He was over it. He's out. Yeah. Which I don't blame him. No. And so everybody's just looking at me and I'm just like, I just shrug my, sh I just put my arms up. Like, I and so, uh, Oh man. So they just, they just kind of like shook their heads and like kissed or whatever. And I kept this wrong song going. And, uh, a what? couple hours later, wait, wait, the, wait, uh, wait, what song was it supposed to be? I still don't know at the, uh, at their wedding reception, he came up to me and he was like, dude. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, I'm so sorry. I told you I'll be there for you. Didn't I? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, Oh, we changed it. I forgot to tell you. Oh. And he just, he just never told me. <laughs> no. like, you know, but the best thing is, is like when uh, right after they kissed and you know walked down the aisle, I'm uh, I'm walking back up to the the uh, 
hall and I'm wondering what the fuck just happened. And the pastor walks by me and he goes, kids these days. And he scoffs and shakes his head. And I'm just like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> and I still, at that point, I didn't know that it wasn't my fault, but then nobody, nobody ever figured out that it wasn't my fault. Still to this day, there's somebody telling a story about the asshole DJ that was sitting in somebody's car. Oh God. I wonder and, if they're divorced. I, want, I think they are. Yeah, they, got a huge, they got into a huge fight that night, like a huge fight. If I remember correctly, I think somebody tackled the groom. Oh, that's amazing. Like, yeah, that's yeah, great. Yeah, it was bad. They got really wasted. And, uh, it's because you fucked up their off. wedding. That's why. <laughs> I don't even know. It's because we were the DJs that charged 250 bucks, and everybody else charged like 1000 You get what least. you pay for, sucker. Right, right. Oh God, I'll never forget that. I, now I got to call Chris. I haven't talked to him in a while. But uh, <laughs> there was another time that I was a DJ, which was uh, equally entertaining. Maybe um, I can't remember where I met this DJ. I think it was uh, I was working at Harley, like up in Saginaw, and uh, maybe he's doing an event or something. But he, anyway, um, we got to talk, and he found out I used to be a DJ. And he's like, "Dude, I run this club in Flint." And I was like, you run what? And he's like, there's a club <laughs> in Flint, man. And I'm like, oh, what? And he's like, hey, you, I, I'm taking on more clubs. Do you want to be part of my crew? And I'm just like, oh, Jesus. Oh, man. And, uh, yeah. I'm like, and, and he's not like a turntable DJ. You know, he's yeah. like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to play. I'm going to play crazy bitch eight times in a row because there's girls on the <laughs> dance floor. DJ. And, uh, okay. <laughs> Tommy and, in the club. One of, those, one, one of those ones that just points at the dance floor when they're, you know, when they're playing songs. Oh hell yeah! And, uh, <laughs> and, and so, uh, so he's like, "Yeah, man, come to my club. I'll show you how to run my shit." And I need you to fill in. And he gave me like this date. It was like a Saturday night, and I only had to fill in from like nine to ten thirty. It's like, all right. And he's like, "I'll give you seventy five bucks, and the club will give you free drinks." It was like sweet. So. The week of, I go up there on like a Wednesday. Tommy's like, I'm a, I'm about to make the club regret that decision. <laughs> right. I hate club music, too. I, I mean, I shouldn't say I hate it, but I mean, I just never got into it. I never listened to it. I don't know anything about it, but I'm like, whatever. Well, it's dumb. That's, what, that's why I scoffed at the fact that Tommy and the club, that it just doesn't make sense <laughs> to me. Tommy and the club getting chips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so... uh <laughs> So I get up there. It's like a Wednesday night, and it's you know it's it's a club. So there's some dance, and, you know. And uh, this guy like doesn't show me how to do anything. He's got like this dude's actually. He put a he had like state of the art shit. He had like three huge mixers. He had a, like a um, projector screen that he hit a button and it pulls down and, and, it, and it plays the video of the song oh, that's all playing. Right, yeah. cool. And uh, he's got all these lights and shit. And it was it was a good setup. I gotta give it to him. And uh, he shows me like three buttons. He's like, you do this, bam, bam, bam. Now you're good to go. And I was like, I don't even know what the fuck you just touched. I, did, I, I wasn't even <laughs> close enough to see what they said on him. Nothing, you know. And he's like, oh, you, you'll get it. You'll get it. And he just kept like going and trying to hit on like the four women that were there. Bam, like, Jesus. bam, bam. Right. And, and so I kept, I'm like, dude, I don't know what's going on. Oh, you, you get it, man. It's super easy. It's super easy, man. Just you, bam, bam, bam. And I'm like, all right, whatever. And so after like an hour and a half of me just sitting there pretty much like, I don't know, waiting for him to show me something. I was like, all right, dude, I'm out of here. And he's like, cool, man. I'll see you Saturday night. You know, I'll be here about, I'll be here about 1030. You'll be good. I'm like, all right. And so I shouldn't have went, but it, it was 75 bucks. All free drinks, right? Yeah. So I show up like Saturday at like eight forty-five. I try the bam, bam, bam. I don't even know what I fucking hit. <laughs> Nothing happens. Nothing happens at all. And I, I oh man, it, it was, was bad. It was probably voice activated. You just had to say it, bam in the right way. All right. Finally, at like nine fifteen, I got. I finally got some music playing, but I wasn't even sure how to change to the next song. It was all <laughs> it had like two laptops and stuff, and. So I, I finally found like a playlist, you know, and and uh and that was okay for like two songs. And yeah. then people were like, Where's the video, man? Where's the video? And oh like, man, they wanted that video. Wanted the video, and then they start requesting songs. No, I'm really I'm like, I have no fucking clue what you just said. I don't even know what you're talking about. And they're like, <laughs> Come on, it's the, like there were people coming back trying to get to the laptop, you know, like, here, let me show you. 
Yeah, exactly. I'm like, God damn. The wait staff is pissed off at me, of course, because all the people in the bar are like upset. Yeah. You know, like nobody's having a good time. They're waiting for old DJ Fuckface to get there or whatever. I don't remember his name, but um, so it's terrible. It's terrible. I mean, I, I mean, I'm just sitting there. I, I wanted to like sink into a corner and just, and I had the, I had the beloved and her friend with me because I was just like, Oh, you guys should come. And they were like sitting at the bar and that, that was kind of fun because I was like trying not to laugh, but they uh-huh. were like laughing and stuff, you know, because what else are you going to do? Right. Right. And so, <laughs> but I don't want to be the dickhead back there. <laughs> like, ha ha, ruined your night. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're never going to dance again. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bam, bam, bam. And so, <laughs> so I don't, I, I, I maybe there might have been one point in the hour and a half where I got three songs to play in a row. Maybe. Oh that my was God. like yeah. <laughs> 10 30. Here he comes. Uh-huh. He comes busting in. I mean, busting in. I, mean I just see him coming. And, and, you know, people are like, he, uh, people are, looking at him and he's he's like doing the i got it i you know he's pointing at him all and stuff and he, he <laughs> literally pushes me out of the way literally pushes me out of the way grabs the microphone and goes y'all think there could be a party without your boy and i'm like you <laughs> oh motherfucker yeah. about to save your souls with my magnificent music selections it's going off Dude. y'all he went bam 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 and that whole fucking place just like bam lights everywhere music <laughs> video <laughs> everything you know Man, synchronized up, bouncing up and down. Yeah, <laughs> I walk over to the bar because he's like, you know, as, as I, I'm supposed to go get my money from the uh, the bar bartender, and uh, so she gave me my 75 bucks. And there's this table of all girls right next to the bar, and he's already over there, right? And he's got a stupid fucking like one of those derby fedoras on. <laughs> he's got a fucking- fez. <laughs> like a suit, no, like a suit jacket. Okay. He might have had. A, he probably had like a sweater underneath it or something. Oh you know, like a, like a blazer. Yeah, like a fucking derby. And he's going. He's going to all, all all the four girls, or maybe there were four or five. But he was going. Hey, baby girl, shots. Baby girl, shots. And he's going to each one, and they're completely ignoring him. And he's going shots. Hey, baby girl, shots. Baby, oh baby girl. Hey, hey, hey. Baby, hey, baby girl. girl. Hey, baby girl, shots. Hey, 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 baby girl, shots, and none of them turned around. And that's when I was like, "All right, all right." I think I think I might have. I think I got seventy five bucks, and I ordered another uh, another straight vodka, and then I downed it and got the hell out of there. So he wanted you to be DJ Wingman, is what it was. <laughs> Maybe, man. I just couldn't get the boom, boom, boom. I guess I don't know. I, you don't got that bam, bam, bam down, yo. That's the problem. You <laughs> thought it was boom, 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 but it's bam, bam, bam. You're right. You're right. Bam, bam, bam. But I, I remember it was like these three switches, and I couldn't find them for the life of me. I don't even think they existed. From when, They were there Wednesday somewhere because I watched <laughs> them flip them. Saturday, nowhere to be found. Yeah. It was like a... God, I, it was like a fucking. I could have. I, I could have. I could probably have, could have had more luck, like fucking flying like a goddamn space shuttle. <laughs> I wonder. I hear this story and I wonder secretly how many times he did this to people. <laughs> and, and if it was a big ruse to make himself look better. I mean, that's, that's what I, that's, that's, that's what I get out of the story, but it might not have been, but the way he came in and he grabbed the mic and he's like, y'all think you could have a party without your boy. And I'm like, man, yeah, like maybe he's trying to get him back into the mood or something. But, and he told me, it's just like, it was like, he was like this guy, come on, get a load of this guy. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody give two thumbs down. You know? Yeah. I mean, rightfully so. Get a look at that guy. I mean, ugh. <laughs> but, but, but I feel good. like he probably had done that, and that was like a move, like where he would get some random and like time it and wait to strike and make his big entrance to save the day. It certainly seemed like it because he showed up right at 1030. He never told me where he was probably in the parking lot the whole time. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> He's he like, never told me what he had to go do or whatever, which was none of my business. I'm not the type of person to ask, but uh, you know, he was right there, right on time. And it's like, man, he, I don't know. We probably got a raise after that night. Yeah, he's just in the parking lot, <laughs> quivering with anticipation. Yo, dog, that <laughs> fucking dork in there ain't got what I got, yo. I'm about to bring he, he, it. He, I'm about to set it off. 
dog. He can bam, but he can't bam, bam, bam. <laughs> he can't. Ain't nobody can bam, bam, bam like me. And that was the thing. Was like I, uh, that whole Wednesday night. I was like, dude, you're not showing me anything. You're not showing me anything. And like the only thing he showed me is the bam, 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 and I did, he did it so fast, and like I didn't even see what he hit. So it's just. He's like, I don't know. He's, he's like, bra. There's n- there's nothing to it. It's just bam, bam, bam. Right. I mean, right. somebody requests a song. They want to dance a little bit. You want to get those shorties on the dance floor. You just go bam, bam, bam. You got it. <laughs> you got it. Now do it. Do it like me. Bam, bam, bam. You know. Shit. I t- it was busy in there that Saturday night too. It was. I'll never forget the people just standing there with like their hands on their hips. Like, come on, really. <laughs> <laughs> They're just waiting for like I don't know like fucking uh, bust a move to come blaring through or something. Oh, I don't man. know. But. What if they were filming a beer commercial there, <laughs> and, and you were hired secretly to like be the person be the that idiot. ruins the party, and then the Bud Light <laughs> comes in and everyone starts shit get, starts bumping. Yeah, I would have done that. They would. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great. All right, I'll t- yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be the fall guy for that. Who walks around and says "baby girl shots"? Dude, it was so baby girl. Hey, baby girl shots, shots. Baby girl. Hey, baby girl shots. <laughs> Is that supposed to be fucking flattering or something? Like, <laughs> who responds positively to that? Not, not those girls. Yeah. <laughs> Is she supposed to instantly swoon because you said baby girl? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that was great. But, yeah, that's time when I, I got I to figure out how to tell that. I should tell that story on stage, too. I just got a, a few uh, fucking 10-minute chunk of how I used to be a DJ. Yeah, there it is. I just got to write it out better, and there we go. That would be fun. Oh man, you didn't bring your your A game to the podcast. Fuck off, man. <laughs> well, I really need to be like this more on stage. I think and I, I haven't really written anything in a long. At least I haven't written comedy in a long time. I write a lot, but that's a goddamn mistake. What are you writing? The, are you writing more poems? <laughs> I haven't written a poem. I just write like. Uh, well, you read them. You know, on my Facebook. You just memories. You I guess. write Facebook posts. <sighs> Yeah, but they're really—you know what I mean. Like once a once a couple of weeks, once a week, you get a real long memory. I, uh, I and want... they're always always funny, I think, and they're always interesting. But it's nothing that I would tell on stage. It's better on paper. I want another poem about Bill the Builder or whatever the fuck that was. That was fantastic. <laughs> Bill the businessman. I can't the find business. that. It's on the podcast. You read it aloud. Oh, yeah. I know. I need to go back and publish that. Yeah, I love it. It's my favorite thing Bill, you've ever done. I was like, Bill the business and had a wife, Marianne. Yeah, I'm like, this is this is some you Shel know. Silverstein shit right here. Yeah, it was very much Shel Silverstein. Yeah. It was it was actually Shel Shel Silverstein. No kidding. Everybody <laughs> <I don't laughs> know. <laughs> Just googled unknown poems by Shel Silverstein. Yeah, that's no. cool. No, I came up, but yeah, it was very Silverstein-ish. Isk. Very yes, Silverstein-ish, and not the shitty 2000-ish punk band, right. Silverstein. <laughs> they had one good song. They had one good song. And what was I that? Remember. I was just I was saying, I can't remember the name of it, but I remember they had one good song. I was going to say Ohio is for lovers, but that was Hawthorne Heights, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like, how they, I like an emo band named themselves after their parents' neighborhood. Oh, is that what it was? I don't know. It sounds like it. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you grow up, Hawthorne Heights? What's the name of your band, Hawthorne? <laughs> oh, you know, you, you know, they all called it the Heights too. Oh, yo, oh, we're staying in sure. the Heights for sure. <laughs> what was that show on MTV with Lauren and? Oh Kristen? yeah, it was the Heights, wasn't it? Or Laguna mm-hmm. Beach, and then there was yeah, but then there was like the spinoff or whatever. Yeah. I don't know if I I don't know what I shoveled more of today, snow or food into my fat fucking face. I don't know. Oh boy. <laughs> well <laughs> might be a toss up. <laughs> I don't know. I did pretty good today. I have this thing now that I'm not I'm not drinking, you know, I'm doing dry February. Uh-huh. And so I've allowed myself to eat more like uh not necessarily worse, but like at the end of the night, I would normally and eh, two to three nights a week I would probably have, you know, some beers. Well, lately I can't kick um, 
like I'll, I'll find like some chocolate covered peanuts in the house or something. And I just got to have them. Right. I got to I got to be addicted to something, Randy. I got to have well, something. Yeah. You got to replace something with something. That's why you're going to right. the gym every fucking day. Right. Well, I was right. I got to, and all you would do, I got to work on my chest. I got to work on my yeah. chest. My I had, chest. I had boobs, man. I didn't want boobs. I wanted t- and my chest got, oh, it was so tight for a while. Now it's, now it's, Check it's out not that tight bad. chest. Oh. Yeah, it was, it was, it was good for a while. I mean, it was, I mean, it was still fat. I mean, they're still yeah. fat on it. Yeah. That's for sure. But they people, weren't saggy. You, you would walk down the street and people would be like, look at that tight chest on that fat kid. Wow. <laughs> no, no, they definitely. <laughs> I would always make the joke that there's muscle under this fat, though. When there was. Now there's not. <laughs> so, But it's going to come back soon. As I'm, I'm going to get back in the gym. Oh, shit. And- I've been saying that for like 14 months now, so. Well, I'm still working out every day. Even today, I uh, I did that two hours of shoveling, and I was like so sore. But I, I made myself go get on the elliptical for a half. I usually do an hour, but man, I was I was sore from uh, shoveling already. So I just did a half hour today. But. I need to, man. I I love uh, or loved, I guess, working out. It's my favorite thing, and I know if I do it for like a month, I'll be in really good shape again. Because that's yeah. all it takes. However. It's the getting started thing. And I look yeah. in the mirror now and I look like the I'm all bloated and puffy and like droopy and gross and I'm like, oh like <laughs> like 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 on the Super Bowl they have all these commercials. I don't need to see Wayne's World again twenty seven years after the fact with Wayne looking Dude, all they looked terrible, didn't they? Oh, oh Wayne's God. looking all puffy and his wrinkle what the hell right he's just got crow's feet all over his face and oh ugh. man that was sad that was not good i'm like <laughs> i was so sad i'm like someone re- re- ran head first into the wall of aging they really yeah. and then i read they the should. other day he's we, he wants to he wants to resurrect austin powers and i'm like oh, no. i don't ever want to see you again unless you create a new <laughs> character don't ruin right. things you know, yeah, quit ruining my childhood. Ugh. I mean, I, I, I think Wayne was the best character. Mike, Mike, I mean, it wasn't really I, Austin Powers. I appreciate it, but it wasn't. I'd probably never watch another Austin Powers movie, but I'll watch Wayne's World. I watch Wayne's World once a year. I love Wayne's World, but so I think he just you're done, Mike. You know, you're done. I mean, you can. He did. He did that really good uh, documentary a couple years ago about that uh, agent. Super Super Mensch, have you seen that? I've heard of it. I didn't realize he was involved in it, though. I think he's a. I think he. I think he's the one that did everything. I think he was like producer, director. I'm pretty sure. Oh, that's wild. Uh, yeah, Shemp Gordon is that is that the name? Shemp Gordon, I think. Yeah, that's the Super guy. Mensch. Yeah, awesome. yeah. Yeah, he was like Alice Cooper's uh, 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 agent among many others, and yeah, he was like a probation officer, and uh, he got like a he went to work one day and got his ass fucking kicked by like one of the inmates, maybe a like, corrections officer. And he got his ass fucking kicked by one of the inmates and he just quit that day. And he went to that famous hotel on, in, on the sunset strip. He just walked right there. And that's where like Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin and all those people hung out. I can't remember the name of the hotel right now, but it's really famous. And uh, he just like walked into a room and started doing drugs with all these rock stars and <laughs> They're like, you want to be our agent? And that's what happens. So. That's awesome. Really good story. Really, really good story. But yeah, Mike Mike like produced and directed all I love Mike Myers. I don't mean to shit on him. If he like you said, if he comes up with a new character, then I'm all for it. But yeah. I don't want to see Austin fucking powers. No. I understand <laughs> that no- nostalgia is everywhere, but it doesn't charm me anymore. It makes me feel old because the people that do it are old. Right. I know, man. Gart didn't even Dana Car he didn't even sound like Gart. No. He sounded like Man. I'm like you're not even doing fucking Garth's voice, and you're Garth. Man, I saw the the newest uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure movie, and oh, I yeah. and I and I liked it just fine. However, Keanu Reeves in that movie. So here's what I did because I'm a goddamn freak, and I have a movie podcast called Someone's Favorite Movie, which you should subscribe to. All the people. Um, so I watched all of them like in a week. I watched all three of them, and so I watched the latest one which came out last year like 20 something years after the last one did 
<laughs> and Keanu <laughs> Reeves is so his voice was so old manish and and like weary uh, compared to the other movies. I'm like, oh, like, like any other oh, movie. Yeah, go do John Wick 17. I don't care. That's fine. But to do that character again, you just can't. You can't do it. So stop it. Dude, Keanu Reeves is in this terrible Netflix movie about these two girls break into his house and hold him hostage. Have you seen that? Oh, knock, knock. Well, it's a train wreck. Oh, my God. Yeah, that came I out. Mean, that came out like 10 years ago. Did it really? I don't know. It was on like uh, it was on Netflix. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I couldn't I couldn't watch the whole thing. I mean, I should have stopped right away, but it was so bad. I was like, this this is it's like one of those things where, you you know, you, you want to stop, but you're like, no way. Oh, no it's way. awful. Like, I th- no, it's, you've seen it. Yeah, I think it came out in 2012. I saw it when it came out. So bad. It's so fucking unbelievable. Like these two chicks pretty much just Kevin McAllister him for like yeah. fucking what, like three days or something. Yeah. Well, and then they... they You're supposed to believe it? Well, isn't the thing they, they show up at his door and they like seduce him and he has sex with them yeah. and they like tape right, it or is- something to to kind of, I don't know, blackmail well, they- him? Yeah, then they tell him that they were underage, and he like freaks out because he was going to call the cops because they wouldn't leave the house, and his wife was going to come home, and he was yeah. afraid he was going to get caught, and he's trying to get him to leave the house, and they said, well, you can't call the cops because we're underage, and we'll tell him, and then, then it turned out they're not underage, and that's not the big thing of the story. They no. tell him that way again, and then like they like pretty much bury him alive. Yeah. You know, this fucking stupid yeah. shit. It's so bad. Uh, that movie will be a curiosity in the future because one of the, the girls in that movie is Anna. Anna De Armas, who is dating Ben Affleck now, and she's but she was in Knives Out last year, and she got a lot of acclaim for it. So okay, yeah, she's yeah. a good actress, actor, and it was just whoever wrote that movie and whoever directed it. Man, it was it was just it was just so like un- yeah. like the things. It was just like one of those, yeah right, yeah right. Okay, this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. So I, and I didn't even know what it was about. I just like not not. Oh, I thought it was like a horror movie. So I'm sitting there watching it, and then what? Because I was just flipping through Netflix, and then they do the seducing thing, and I was like, "That's weird." I don't know about that. That, that was weird. That would have never happened. That's stupid. Right. Yeah. I mean, just the way it played out was just ridiculous. And I was like, "Okay, there's like a killer that's going to come." And so that's when I like clicked on it. And I was like, "Oh, they're the bad girl. Oh, the girls are the bad ones." This, yeah. And then it just got extremely worse from there <laughs> here's a movie if it's i i it might still be on netflix i watched it a couple months ago with pookie um it's a movie called hush and it, it's about a it's a slasher movie but it's about a writer who is deaf and she kind of lives in a cabin in the woods now to write her next book and she just got over a relationship or whatever and this random slasher dude starts stalking her but she can't hear so she'll he'll be standing in the same room as her and watching her and she does she has no clue oh that's interesting yeah Yeah. i think i talked about that now that you say that i think i did uh yeah okay so that's worth it huh it would i it was a lot better than i fucking expected i didn't expect much and it was pretty great so okay well, we should probably get off movies. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but anyway, your other podcast. Yeah. But anyways, I, you know, I see all this nostalgia and shit and it just makes me feel old and like all of a sudden I have all this gray hair in my sideburns. I'm like a salt uh, and pepper motherfucker and I'm like, "Where literally over a weekend it showed up." I'm like, "Jesus yeah. Christ." I remember the first time my my beard went gray, it like went gray overnight. I'm like, "Jesus." Yeah, right. And, and one day, you know, uh, most days I I feel like I look like shit, and I feel like shit. And I know mm-hmm. I know it's because I need to work out, and I don't, and I treat my body like a goddamn train wreck, and it's whatever. But one day I was feeling pretty good about myself. I'm like, yeah, look at you, you know. And and I go to my job, you know, and I I I work in a well. Well, I'll be vague about it, but I, I used to work around kids and I don't anymore. But one day I was in a place where one of the kids that I used to work with recognized me. 
And he was like, didn't you used to be a librarian at such and such place? And I'm like, yeah, I was. And he was like, dude, what happened to you? You look like my uncle. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm like, I guess I could go either way, but the context and the, the, the vibe that it, yeah. I feel like that kid was shooting off. Sounds like his uncle just got out of prison. Yeah. I'm like, well, what does your uncle look like? You got an eight by 10, you know? Right. <laughs> Let's let's figure this out together. Like, let me judge if I like the cut of a jib or not. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> this is more, pulls out a picture of his mug shot. Yeah, I feel especially <laughs> dad like anymore because it's finally dawned on me that no matter how I try, how hard I try, I'll never be cool. And it, it, it all comes down to my like I was. I have these shoes now, and when I walk in them, if it's wet out, they squeak. It's, <laughs> it, it it sounds like I have a pair of rubber duckies tied to my feet as I walk down the oh, that's awesome. down anywhere, like any hard surface. Like and I'm like, there's no possible way in this fucking universe that M- Matthew McConaughey ever has shoes that squeak. Right, he, he would float on levitation waves of coolness before his shoes would ever squeak. <laughs> I uh you said no matter how hard you try and it, I mean believe me nobody should be taking cool tips from Tommy but uh, <laughs> maybe being cool is about not trying well then I win the blue ribbon <laughs> you just said that you try no matter how hard you try listen don't try I co- don't try buddy. just be cool man I am cool just relax, man. Yeah, you got to get that McConaughey going. Right, right. Miles Davis, man. Just be cool. Matthew McConaughey is the coolest person in the history of the world. Yeah, but he, I think he'd be annoying after like 20 minutes, right? I don't. He's so interesting. Really? He, he, went, on uh. the, he went on this podcast tour, and he was on Howard Stern because he had a book that came out, which I okay. w- which I got for my birthday, and I'm excited to read it. Okay. Every fucking podcast and like interview he had, he fucking killed it. Okay. I'll check him out. He was just on WTF too. Oh, was he? Oh, I need to listen to that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I say just. I mean, if you go to all episodes, a couple months ago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe I have him wrong. I just feel like he would, you know. Tommy, this this is what you need to do. Tomorrow, you need to listen to Matthew McConaughey. On the Tim Ferriss show. Tim Ferriss. Okay. Yes. One of the best interviews I've ever heard. I'm like, this okay. good dude is changing my life as he speaks with his coolness. F-E-R-R-I-S. Yep. Uh, okay. Two S's, I think. Okay. Okay. I'm sure it would pop up. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Google half. Yeah, it's, Google half of it, right? It's a super popular one, yeah. But, yeah. Okay. I'm serious. You'll enjoy it. He is a uh, he's like a a fitness and intellectual on the okay. on the level of Joe Rogan. They're very okay. comparable. I think. Like I am. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like me. I get it. Yeah, you're totally into fitness and being smart and shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fitness is donut in my mouth. I can't even do it right. Oh, <laughs> you ruined the heck joke, and you didn't even try. I did. Oh, Fuck. I can't even be the hacky. worst. I can't even be hacky. Uh, You're too intellectual for it. You can't stoop <laughs> to that like, level. My mind was like, nope. Can't play through it, and it saved me. It saved my reputation. I have a plastic bag at my feet, and I keep seeing it out of the corner of my eye. And every fucking time, I think it's a cat. I've done it like six <laughs> times. It's not a cat. It's not. It's a definitely a plastic bag. It's Ugh. a plastic bag from American Beauty. <laughs> It's gonna speak to me soon. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> let's let's watch that movie since we're talking about movies in the context of Kevin Spacey now. Yeah. Right. Oh. Who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it? I mean, yeah. a lot of people, I guess. Everybody's a creep, hey. don't you know? Yeah. Kevin Spacey. <laughs> Kevin Spacey. <laughs> Bill Cosby. God. Ugh. Yeah. People are weird. People suck. There was this. There's this kid that uh, 
works at a gas station near me. And it's amazing because I watched him, like, experience a metamorphosis during this whole pandemic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, he worked at this gas station, and he was, like, super awkward and quiet and weird. And, man, I don't know. I, I thought maybe he had, like, some ailments, not to yeah. degrade him at all, but maybe there was something mentally not firing or I don't know. Got, I don't. He got laid. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe he got laid. I don't know. But all of a sudden, I went in there like a month ago, and he emerged from his awkward co- cocoon into a magnificently odd butterfly. All of a sudden, <laughs> his hair is is dyed blacker than the night. And he's grew he he's grown these bangs into his goddamn face. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a woman involved there. You think so? I'm like he yeah. he went from awkward dark into I don't know. Maybe that's the fork in the road when you're awkward, isn't it? You either evolve into someone more social or you're just a disgusting creep. That's the only two <laughs> options. And I'm not sure which road he took. But yeah. it's one of them. It's one of them. Oh man, that's funny. Yeah, I would say any time that a like a man at that age goes through, I'm assuming he's younger. Yeah, right? probably early twenties, late teens. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's it's probably a, first, you're right. There's probably a girl involved. Girlfriend. Yeah, he it, had his first girlfriend. It's probably a girl that works there too. Right. <laughs> that he's trying to impress. That would be my guess. Right, right. Yeah, I guess I shouldn't say he got laid, but there's definitely a girl. There's some there's some motivation factor that has to do with a woman, I would say. Yeah. Or, hey, it could be a man. This is 2021. Yeah, you either way, go it. for it. Get you some. Right. Either shoot way, your shoot your You got to shoot your shot. All right. <laughs> All right, let's wrap this up, huh? All right. Yeah, this is fun. Okay. This has been the Miserable Retail Slave Show. Do us a great big fucking favor. Go to that Facebook.com slash Miserable Retail Slave Podcast. Join our Facebook group, please. You know, Mm -hmm. we took it public. We had a private Facebook group. We took it public. We've got 70 folks there, and I love them all. God bless you. 70? We can get 70 more, it seems like. I think so, too. Uh, Follow me on Twitter at mretailslave. Or Instagram, Miserable Retail Slave Podcast. Or listen to my other pod. It's called Someone's Favorite Movie, which I do with fellow original couch party crew member, Tom Co. We've hey, got... it's Tom Co. Tuesday. It is Tom Co. Tuesday. What, what? All right. We've got it. So in... We've got it. It's so stupid. Yeah, it is. That's why it's great. Yeah. I agree. We've got a, me and Tom Co. have an interview with Dr. Wolfie. Uh, Wolfiela from YouTube. Oh, God. Well, let's try that again when I'm not burping. <laughs> Me and Tom Co. have an inter- interview with Dr. Wolfiela from the YouTube. He's highly renowned for his horror reviews. It was a great combo. I hope you subscribe to that pod and check it out. It'd be great. I want Tommy to come back on someone's favorite movie. There's a few films I want him to cover. Okay. All right. Perfect time. I need I need shit to do. I know you do. I mean, you started off that podcast with me, and then you bowed out real quick. You're like, I can't do this. <laughs> I was anymore. a busy man back then. It's true, yeah. But now I can't just just cast Tomko asunder. No, no, Tomko's probably a way better pod host than I am. Oh man, did you say that out loud? I, I love Tom. He's the guy that got me into uh, Bill Hicks many, 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 many years ago. So Tomko's responsible for your comedy career. Yeah, I would say a uh, part of it. Yeah, I mean, he definitely. I mean, uh, I was, my dad, you know, has been a comedian way before I was, so he'd be the number one. But uh, Tom definitely. I mean, I never heard of Bill Hicks or heard anyone like Bill Hicks, and I was just like, whoa. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, and Tom made me like this uh, super long uh, CD, and I don't know, like told me all this stuff about him, and I just went down this huge Bill Hicks rabbit hole for about six straight years. So. Even Tom, got a tattoo. Tom Co's your 
comedy daddy. That's what you're telling me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he introduced me to uh, what I think is one of the greatest comedians to ever live, at least one of the greatest social critics. So. What? All oh, right. Bill Hicks, fantastic. Tell people where they can <laughs> tell people where they can find you, Mr. Tom Coast or Tommy. Jeez, you're Tommy. I'm so ah. confused by all the Toms. Yeah, <laughs> um, you can find me on TikTok at oh, Tom God. Period E Period Thompson. You never responded to my latest TikTok I sent you. Was I supposed to? That w- uh, you didn't. You didn't even give it a thumbs down. Uh, I wouldn't do that to you. I I thought that was your strongest installment thus far. Thanks. I still haven't figured out a way to break through, but uh, it got like I don't know, like. 70 some likes on Facebook. So I was pretty okay with it. I was like, all right, that's that's fine. I made enough people laugh, but I'm like TikTok. It's like at 16 or something. I'm like, come on, come on. But there's like tricks, I guess. 16 views. No, no. Like 16, like hearts or whatever. You can only get parts on a, yeah, but and there's like tricks to being like I don't care if I'm TikTok famous. I just want people to laugh at it. You know, I just want to make people happy. But yeah, so find me on TikTok, Tom dot or Tom period E period Thompson. Uh, find me on Facebook, Tommy Thompson. Uh, you can search me as Tom E Thompson or just T O M M Y Thompson. Uh, I did jump back on Twitter. I don't know. Every once in a while, I'm on there, but it's uh Tommy Comedy it, or what is it? Do you know what my Twitter is? I don't. I didn't realize you jumped back <laughs> on. I made some posts the other day that I thought would be good for uh, Twitter. I don't know. I don't remember if it did anything, but <laughs> <laughs> I probably haven't been logged back on. Uh, I think it's Tomedy Thompson. I'm pretty okay. sure. It's just at Tomedy. You got to fuck with uh, them, them hashtags, boy. That's how you get famous on that TikTok. That's that's what they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm learning that. I'm learning that. I'm trying. Uh, um, yeah, some people told me recently that you got to uh, just find like the most famous hashtag. And even if it doesn't even relate to your video, just do it anyway. Yeah. I'm like, oh. I, I promoted the pod on, on TikTok. And that's all I did was find the, the one that was trending the most. And it got like 612 views or whatever. Like, that's yeah. that's stupid. But right. it right. works. Right. So I guess. Yeah, I did see that on TikTok. I, I gave it a little heart there. So, yeah, so uh, Facebook's my main platform. I'm not really big on social media, but but that's where I hang out most of the time. So, All right. As always, the biggest thing you could possibly do for us is, if you like this, suggest it to a friend and tell them to suggest it to a friend. That's the snowball effect. That's I'm not referring to the gross clerk's definition of a snowball. I'm saying the snowball effect of becoming <laughs> viral, and I'm not referring to STDs either. Get your minds out of the gutter, people. Jesus Christ. Ugh. <sighs> I'm Randy. That's Tommy. Uh, next week, we'll probably have two epis. We'll probably do this and another episode of The Hut, which Tommy loves a lot. I do. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it's the best, thing, the that's, best thing we've ever done. It's the history of unimportant things in which we look at some ridiculous part of pop culture or society in general that you mm-hmm. that shouldn't even be looked at discreetly or closely. And we put a magnifying glass on it and look at the entire history behind it because sometimes yeah. that stuff is fun, you know? Yeah, so if you have any suggestions for the history of unimportant things, tell us in our Facebook group. Good idea, yeah. We're open to suggestions for anything, really. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> whatever, you know, new co host whatever. Yeah. Tell us how to live our lives. What should I have for dinner tomorrow, you know? I don't care. Yeah, right. <laughs> We'll see you next week. Until then, stay miserable. Thank you very much. Bye. Cut to black on the crazy train. Being wheels off. My dope end of my scalp peeled off. Skills soft with the pen I brought on Dow D boy. Y'all gonna learn about that boy. He go hard. Ben Wallace. Ten haters got ten wallets. I came broke and I left ballin'. That's no joke and that's George Carlin. I'm here. Ain't that a fact? The pit boy I kick it like pack a lack. We the rap pack, you a pack of rats. Get packed in the crack like oh I snap. Cush packs, crack a pack. Blowing up to the track collapse. With a white girl with the fattest ass yeah. Break the ice, you catch a bash Yeah, fish in the barrel Hood hippie apparel See me on the beat like Christmas And Christians with carols And it's the radical, tactical, magical Sagittal, suture splitter Future spitter, boo Here's a cheers to new beginnings Boo the rapper, yeah He who do it different than you Who is this ludicrous?
Chris Rama spitting is written so smooth. When I seen some hustle money here, yeah. I've been bowling, getting buckets in the hood, homie. Say what you were about it. I know you thought you could, motherfucker, but you ain't cut like that. You's a bitch like that. You ain't from my cloth. Put the city on my back. Put that city on the map. You in my city making that whack shit. That's what the facts here. Man up and face them. I went crazy on some hippie shit. I'm back where I came from. Who's highs? Oh, you know it's D-Boys. Since I taught them about an hour north of Detroit. Who you think you're fucking with? My Buddha's thinking public. I do this cause I love to spit in you. Girl, you just a bitch. What you really wanna know about some gangsta shit? That just white noise. I don't hear that. Yeah, I'm tone deaf. You get auto tuned out. By my computer brain, birds do south. Damn, I'm cold. I got some franchise hoes. I'm a muddy water boy. It's a landslide, though. How I do my thing. Smoking on some of that super dang. Go.